Well, Wisdom, the summer months are high season for ticks, which means Lyme disease as well. Our next guest, she's a board certified dermatologist who has actually seen an uptick in tick cases among her patients. This morning, McLean Dermatology and Skin Care Center founder, Dr. Lily Talakub, joins us to talk about uh, understanding and preventing ticks. Dr. Lily, good to see you this morning. There is. See you, Holly. So my first thing is, uh, you know, is Lyme disease our only concern with ticks or can they carry other things too? No, ticks can carry a number of other diseases, such as Rocky Mountain spotted fever, ehrlichiosis. There's a lot of conditions that can carry Lyme is the most prevalent, particularly in our stimulated just by a bite. And oftentimes people don't know they have it until weeks or even months later. Yeah, I know it's one of those things that is misdiagnosed too quite frequently. Let's talk first about preventing the bite in general. Uh, so ticks, they're really parasitic arachnids, right? And they just, they latch onto you and they want to suck your blood. So how do we, they don't hop on you, they don't fly. How do you just prevent getting them in the first place? Well, the first thing is wearing long sleeves, high necks, long pants, tucking the pants into the socks when you're out Side for a particularly long period of time or in a grassy area, but it can happen in your own backyard. In Virginia, Maryland, where there's a lot of trees and grasses, they can be out mm -hmm. there even if you're not on a long hike. So wearing the clothes, wearing sprays with at least 20% DEET will help you significantly. Showering right after you, you're outside, washing your scalp, your hair, where the ticks can hide are really important. Making sure you look at your skin in the shower, under the arms, in the growing, on your back. People come in to me just for a routine skin check. They don't even know the ticks were there. The photo that you put, put up was a tick that I found randomly on somebody's back. They didn't even know it was there. So they can live on their host for up to 10 days. You wouldn't even know it unless you're checking your skin. Well, I want to make sure people understand the importance of doing that thorough body check. So when you come in from being outside, even if your kids are just playing in the backyard, like you said, how should you go about doing the check and the areas you really need to concentrate on? So make sure you look at folds. The folds are the most important. Obviously, if you don't have somebody checking your scalp at home, have somebody look through your scalp, or you can come in and see us, and we'll do a check for you if you're worried. Look behind your ears, around your neck, around your underarms, in your groin, and the areas where it's not very visible, your back, the back of your legs, where ticks can hide. Well, let's talk about, because so we're showing we're, right... I'm sorry, we're showing right now like how you recognize. So say you find something, uh, be it the actual tick or how do you know if it's a tick bite? Let's start with the actual tick. How do you go about removing it? So the ticks are the size of a poppy seed. Most people don't even recognize that it's a tick. They may see it, think they have a scratch. So the ticks look like the black dot. It can look like just a black dot on the skin. You grab a pair of tweezers very close to the skin and squeeze and pull. You want to get all the mouth parts out. And if you don't or you don't feel comfortable doing it, come on in and we'll take it off for you. Oftentimes the red spot doesn't appear for, for days to weeks later. So you may not even know it's there. And then that bullseye rash usually can occur up to 10 days to weeks later and usually that's the sign of Lyme disease but it actually may not be the first sign you notice so the black dot really is hides on your body you got to be aware to look at your skin to try to isolate it if you can and, and we can check you or we can take off the tick if you have one all right let's talk about the folk remedies because we've all heard them you know put a put a, a a lip match or you know up next to the the no. end of the tick and it'll crawl right out or put nail polish on it or even uh, petroleum jelly. What are your thoughts on those? Try not to do any of those. It can actually harm the skin worse. The vinegar, the match, all those, you know, the, the Vaseline. Try to just take the tick out. The mouth parts have to come out. Those are the areas that bite and kind of get engorged with blood. You got to make sure you get that entire tick out. Sometimes people don't even notice they don't have the mouth part till a couple weeks later and they have a bump on their skin and then we have to take it out by by opening the skin up and removing them. But but making sure that you get the mouth parts with a really firm tweezer is actually the safest way to do it. And the bottom line is if you have any questions at all, make sure you go to a reputable dermatologist like Dr. Lilly. Dr. Lilly, thank you so much. Oh, such great advice this morning. Really appreciate you. Thank you for having me, yes. All right, and there's her information if you want to find out more about her office and the services she provides.